Hi guys, this is Casey with Android Central and I'm taking a look at the Ouya, the Android powered video game console. It's a small cube, about three inches on each side, silver and black paneling. It has a nice etch of the Ouya name on the front panel. On the top of the device, there is the power button. It illuminates with a U when turned on, which can be held for five seconds to turn off the device. And on each corner of the top panel, there are four Allen wrench screws for easy disassembly if any repairs or modifications are needed. Around the back, there are five ports. The top port is for the AC adapter. The right middle is for an ethernet. The left middle is micro USB. This allows a computer to connect to the Ouya for access to its internal files and folders. The bottom right is standard USB. This is used for expandable storage for additional space for games. And on the bottom left is the HDMI out, which of course is for audio and video out to the television set. Unlike many Android smartphones and tablets, the Ouya is an actively cooled device that uses fan cooling and has four elongated rubber feet to lift the ventilation ducts up off whatever surface the Ouya is resting on to create a path for airflow. This is the Ouya controller. It has a silver and black color scheme to match the console itself. It has two analog sticks which are rubberized and textured for grip. It has a directional pad as well as a middle button on the bottom. This middle button can either be menu when single pressed or home when double pressed. And on the top right of the controller, there are the O, U, Y, and A buttons. These are going to be your main action buttons. There's also four lights on the top of the controller. This will indicate connectivity as well as what player each controller is connected as. The center black panel of the controller acts as a touchpad. This can be used for mouse input in games and apps. And it can be tapped for selections of menus and buttons. On the top of the controller, there are four trigger buttons. Uh, we have L1, L2, R1, and R2. On the front, depressing the left and right analog sticks act as L3 and R3. The controller is not rechargeable. It takes two AA batteries. These batteries are hidden in each arm of the controller. The panels pop off fairly easily to reveal one battery on each side. This is the Ouya connected to my 40 inch Samsung TV. I'm booting it up now. You can see the boot animation starts with a small U. It only takes a few seconds to boot up, it's very quick. Uh, holding down the button for five seconds will shut it down and it will have to boot back up. It can also go into sleep mode. There are four main menu selections here on the main screen. Play, Discover, Make, and Manage. Play is where all games that have been downloaded are stored and can be accessed. When the maximum number of games is downloaded, we will ask you to delete them before downloading anymore. Here we have Discover. This is where new games can be downloaded. They're divided up into various categories. Make is where all sideloaded apps and the Ouya web browser are stored. You can use the Ouya web browser to download apps. I used it to download Dropbox and ES File Explorer. They uh, install and work just fine. Usually I have to use the touchpad for some menu selections, but the controller can also be used. Manage is where Ouya's system settings are. The Ouya account, controllers, network settings, notifications can all be managed from here. The advanced system settings are also here. This is where the unthemed jelly bean menu is. Uh, does not match the rest of Ouya's menus, but it is not used very often. 
it is good to have for some of those more uh, advanced and deeper settings if they need to be changed. So let's take a look at the games. The first game we'll look at is Chronoblade. This is a action side-scrolling game. Pretty much a, a beat-em-up, very fast-paced, graphically intensive game. And unfortunately, Uya has some trouble keeping up with the game at times when there's a lot of graphics or a lot of uh, enemies on screen. It will slow down a little bit. You can see uh, it slowed down in the beginning there for a couple seconds. It's not horrible, uh, it doesn't break the game. Uh, it is noticeable for anyone who really cares about lag. This game just might need to be better optimized. Uh, it seems like we should be able to handle a game like this with no problem. It handles uh, other games such as Shadowgun without a problem. Shadowgun has been out for probably over a year. Uh, many of you may have already played it. It works great on the Ouya. The physical controller handles the game input very well. It's much easier and much more fun to play than with on-screen controls, which I never personally liked. You can see here that the graphics have been scaled up for HD for the television. Everything looks just as good as on a smartphone or a tablet, except in a much larger size. The game performs very well. I've played a few levels and I've yet to see any slowdown or any performance issues. I'm going to go on a suicide mission here. And this is me dying, so we'll go on to the next game, which is Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo. This is being run using SNES 9X EX Plus, which is available in the Ouya store. This is a game that I actually purchased new from EB Games, I believe, in the early 90s. From what I can remember, I haven't had a working Super Nintendo for a long time, but the sounds and graphics seem very true to the Super Nintendo version. There's no bugs that I found, no uh, problems with frame skipping or anything like that. The games can be loaded for emulators on the Ouya, either by downloading them through the web browser or copying them directly onto the Ouya via micro USB and a computer. Another game, which I also purchased new back in the day, this one from Toys R Us, I believe, Super Smash Brothers. This is being run using a Mupin 64 plus AE. And once emulation gets to this generation of games uh, usually have some problems. Super Nintendo and older like a Genesis and older those usually play very well. Uh, once you get to the Nintendo 64 PlayStation it gets a little more tricky. Uh, it's a little more hit and miss. You can see these characters do not have uh, facial features which is caused by the selection of a video plugin that increases the game performance but it does cause some graphical glitches such as this black screen which should be the victory screen it doesn't freeze the game uh, pressing start will take the game back to the character selection screen so overall Nintendo 64 games are playable although a little buggy and that's it for this quick look at Ouya thanks for watching